uh, I'm going to be sharing uh, a, a short story of a version uh, that Patricia Cota Robles presented in the 35th Annual Congress on Illumination uh, back in mid-August. And it took her about six to eight hours to tell this story. And I'm shooting for 20 to 25 minutes. So bear with me. We're going to go on a journey through the universe and back down to Earth and figure out some very interesting uh, philosophies and theories. So this is Patricia. So I invite you to be a cosmic wanderer with me this morning. So we're going to start with the big picture, the all that is, the God, the I am. And, and uh, uh, Patricia says she refers to God as mother, father, God, because she doesn't want people to think that God is a particular uh, gender. Um, and she talks about the God within us, as she calls it the I am presence. You can hear an extended all her uh, talks on YouTube. So we're going to start with the universe and all that is. And then we're going to hone down. And uh, this story says that, uh, that Patricia Toll said that um, the God, the all that is, uh, talked to a portion or part of itself called Alpha and Omega. And Alpha and Omega in the Greek is the beginning and the end. And uh, in this story, Alpha represents kind of a masculine uh, viewpoint, energy, power, and Omega represents the love energy, uh, sometimes Mother God and Father God. And if we, if we swing down through the Milky Way and we land right here, that's where we are in Orion's arm. And this story proceeds with Alpha and Omega creating uh, not only our uh, designing a system of solar systems. And there are 12 systems, 12 suns, and each system, each sun has 12 planets. So we're going to go down a little bit further. We're going to hit uh, our sun. We're going to hone in on our sun. There are 143 other planets, but we are just one of 144 in a whole big system. And Helios and Vesta are our guides on this particular journey in this particular place in the universe. And then we're gonna go down even, drill down even further to planet Earth. And our guides for planet Earth are called Virgo and Pilar. And once again, Virgo is kind of a male influence and Pilar is a love uh, female influence and masculine power. Um, and, then we're going to go just a little bit further and find out why in the world are human beings on this spaceship in the great universe and how does that uh, how's that related to our us spiritually so let's see so we're going to go back in time but let's just figure out uh alpha and omega created some rules for these uh 12 sun systems and the 144 planets and one was that they were going to learn how to uh, use their creative powers through thought, thought and feeling to become co-creators, advance their skills in co-creating, become more and more uh, creative and at one with God. And at the same time, their intention was they just thought, well, they're going to these beings on this on the on these planets are going to maintain their connection with us. We're not cutting them off. We're going to, they're going to maintain their unity consciousness. They're going to know that they're all one, but they're just in an experiment to learn how to create. Now, this is some information, the raw materials I've studied, talks a little bit about this um, and has some different terminology for this idea. Um, so what happens back in time? Uh, let me see. So, so there are three characters in this story. There's the planet, Mother Earth. There is the um, elemental kingdom, which is considered air, fire, water, all the plants, etheric, uh, all the animals, that kingdom. And then there's a human kingdom. So there's the three basic interactive characters in this story that I'm going to tell. And they are in communication with the higher beings, and uh, Patricia calls them the um, 
the uh, uh, company of heaven. So I'm going to show you who the company of heaven would be. Some people are, she might consider the company of heaven to be angels, ancestors, divas, uh, healers. Uh, she also might consider them to be our space brothers and sisters from other planetary systems and that sort of thing. They can help us. The company of heaven is also full of ascended masters like Jesus, Buddha, and many others. And it particularly playing a part in this particular story is the mighty seven Elohim. And the reason they're important, we'll talk about a little bit later, but they're the builders of form. And I call them heavy lifters for a reason. And I'll explain that in just a little bit too. Okay, so there's the company of heaven. So the next thing is humans became uh, uh, embodied on earth. And we're going to start with humans in Lemuria, which was a continent on planet earth that was uh, kind of stretched across the Pacific Ocean from the US, but then uh, more like in Australia, New Zealand, that whole area. It was a huge continent. And the Lemurians were um, very simple, beautiful souls. Uh, their environment sounds a whole lot like what the Bible says is the Garden of Eden. And they were very intuitive. They were very loving. They were co-creating just as the plan had, had thought they, they would. They were staying in communication with the company of heaven in the higher realm. And the way they did that was they had in their heart a flame that was ignited. And uh, it was ignited with uh, blue sapphire energy, which was from the Father God uh, connection. And that flame would go through their brain, left brain, come through their throat and into their heart. And they also had energy and a, uh, a pink crystal a violet a pink crystal coming to their heart from their mother down to their heart through their right brain, their intuitive side. And when those two energies uh, came together in their heart, it ignited into a violet flame that would then go up through their brain system, their pineal, uh, all of the brain systems, and create a shaft, a golden shaft through their crown, which would then be a communication back and forth through that energy. And so it was a constant open heart and a constant balanced heart between masculine, feminine, and God and uh, upper realm uh, connection. And so here's kind of, let me see if I can get, okay, let me try this. Okay, there we go. Um, so here's kind of what they might look like if you saw them energetically. They were very, very balanced beings with a, a, a threefold flame in their heart that was constantly directing uh, the system. Okay, so now what happens? Well, what happened is kind of a disaster. They were doing just fine. And then there's something that uh, you may have heard of called the shift of the ages. And um, at one point, a shift of the ages was coming up uh, on the Mayan calendar. And so everybody thought it was, meant the end of the world, but it didn't. It just meant a shift of the ages is an opportunity for all creation to ascend to a new level if they're ready, if they can handle it. Well, planet Earth, actually, the folks on planet Earth were ready to shift from a third dimension to a fourth. They could handle the light. Um, but unfortunately, of all the 144 planets, planet Earth was doing well, but the other 143, some were not. What had happened to some of the, uh, the beings on the other planets is they took their uh, ability and their, the rule of free will, and they kind of misused it. And they started miscreating, just experimenting to see what would happen, and they kind of gotten, got off track. And when they got off track, they started uh, over, over emphasizing the physical and under emphasizing the love. And the more they did it, the more they became separate from that a unified communication. 
And the more they did that, the more they thought that there wasn't anything but physical. And um, so they started miscreating. Uh, you know, they would they felt like it was okay to abuse or kill or whatever because everything's physical and it's all about getting your needs and your wants met on the physical realm. Well, so it's time, the shift of ages is coming and the folks on the one, each of the other planets be, besides planet earth had folks that weren't gonna be able to make it. And so these kind connected folks on planet earth living on Lemuria volunteered and asked, to be able to stay back in third dimension when the shift, when the sound was made and everybody shifted and take all the souls from all the 143 planets that were not ready to go and bring them to planet earth that they would uh, be kept on planet earth and helped to get rid of all their miscreations. We call it karma sometimes. So readjust and then planet earth just plan, okay, we'll catch everybody up. And so they were given permission to do that. So um, the, um, let me see what my next slide is here. Oh yeah, here's kind of the idea of the shift of ages. If you can imagine we were trekking along in ev evolution and let's say that's the third dimension right here. Well, what happens is on the third dimension uh, at the shift of ages, if you're ready and you can handle a higher vibration and an advancement, you move up to the fourth dimension. When that happened, when the shift of ages from fourth to, from third to fourth happened, all 143 of the planets that were part of the system of 144 went to the fourth dimension, but Earth stayed in the third. Okay, so these take millions of years between a shift of ages. It's not the 25,000 year cycle or any of that. It's, it's a huge and um, enormous amount of time. So what happened is uh, the Lemurians started uh, taking care of these uh, fallen souls. And when they were young, it seemed to be going well. But as they aged, and as they were growing into human adults, their karmic load was quite uh, quite a lot. And the Lemurians had never experienced anything like it. And so they didn't handle it very well. As a matter of fact, they started getting confused. They started being drawn down by it, becoming a part of it. And so then we had on the Lemurians uh, continent, a, a fallen uh, group of beings. And so the way the uh, creation dealt with that is it knew it had to purge the fallen beings. So you've heard of the sinking of Lemuria. That's what happened. Uh, and the Hawaiian islands are a, a, a supposed to be a little piece of that. And it's interesting because the Lemurians were like living originally on like a, it's kind of like a, a heaven on earth, the garden of Eden. And I've heard some people who go to Hawaii describe it as it's a heaven on earth, it's Garden of Eden. So maybe a little piece of it is still left. Uh, at the same time that the Lemurians were going down, there was another uh, civilization who are the Atlanteans on the other side of the planets. If you looked at planet earth through space at this point, it didn't look like what planet earth looks like now. There were different continents in different places. So the grand hope is put on the Atlantis. Okay. They're going to do it. They're going to figure out how to lift the planet up to a high uh, vibration and it'll be able to ascend and move on. Well, the Atlanteans, they fell too. They, um, they got dragged down by some of their creations and down they go to purge and clear and clean. I'm not sure kind of what happens to the pieces of humanity that are left after those purges. But I think that's who we are ancestors of. Um, but so what happens to us? Oh, and here, I'm gonna show you the next thing. Along these uh, third dimension right here, where let's call that third dimension, we're just naming it for a picture. There's a wheel of karma that goes around and around and around. And we kind of all know that you can get caught in the love energies or 
the negative energies in all of the different areas of life. And that wheel of karma was just going around and around. So we'd reincarnate as a man and then we reincarnate as a woman and we make mistakes and we'd come back and try to fix that. But we were living in a very patriarchal, masculine defined world by this time. Um, so let me see where I am here. So I'm going to fast forward this to, um, it's called a period of grace. And about 500, 500 years ago, mankind started becoming kind of aware that another shift of ages, remember that only happens millions of millions of years, was coming. Now the 143 uh, planets that had gone from third to fourth dimension, they're ready to go to fifth. But what's Earth doing? It's going around and around and around on the wheel of karma. And I guess Alpha and Omega and all the higher beings were feeling pretty bad because, you know, Earth's intention, they could have gone early on, but they stayed back and now they're stuck. And they're trying to figure out, what do we do? How do we help Earth? We need to help Earth. She, you know, they don't need another millions of years of this pain and suffering that they've created. Let's try to find a way to help them. So they, they hatched a plan. What they decided to do is there had been on earth, there was an imbalance of uh, miscreators, uh, but uh, creators, co-creators, uh, you know, people who kind of had their act together and folks who were very enmeshed in negativity and destruction. And so they said, let's change the ratio. Uh, let's see if we can get some volunteers to go down from the higher realms, go down and embody and we'll change the ratio. And let's see if they can help all of Earth to raise its vibration so that it can tolerate the light that you can see in a fourth and then a fifth dimension. And so that, that started happening, like first a few and it seemed to be working out, you know. I'm, I'm sure all along the way, you know, a, a Christ or a Buddha, they were down here doing some of that work early on. Um, but there was kind of a special event in 1987. And this, uh, by the way, this idea, this story has a lot of connection. You don't, when you hear Patricia talk, you don't really just think of Earth by itself. You think of the planets interacting with Earth. You think of spirit interacting with Earth. That's the bigger picture of all this story. Um, and so uh, in 1987, there was something called a harmonic convergence. And that was a special time when two, the sun and the moon and six planets aligned. And uh, they, the planets would align and make in a way such that they created um, equilateral triangles, which so it was called the um, grand triune. And so that's kind of what it looks astrologically when it's presented. Um, but the earth has a grid of ley lines and these are energy lines that cross and they, you know, if you, if you have information right here, it can go here, 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 it can go to the whole world. Um, and the, and the intersections of many of these are like special sacred spots on earth, you know, like Mount Shasta in the U S, uh, Machu Picchu, um, just, um, uh, Ayers Rock in, in Australia. So these are uh, sacred sites where there's an interse intersection of energy. And then also plant, planet Earth has a chakra system. And so, you know, the base, the red is uh, over here in the US and then down here to South America and then over to Australia and then up here, the heart chakra in Stonehenge area. And then the throat is in Egypt area. And then the crown is here in Tibet. And, and uh, the third eye actually rotates. It's, it's gonna be here for until the next 2000 years and then it will go to South America. So that's just a little uh, aside. But remember, these are all really high energy special communication spots. So here we have it. We have light workers during the harmonic convergence of 1987, and Patricia and her group located themselves in Hawaii. And Hawaii uh, is a very, very high energy spiritual place as well. 
the theory was is that these light workers would find these uh, special spots all over the world, and they would kind of act like you know acupuncture doctors that they could take the shafts of light or the energy of light and funnel it to the center of the earth where it would uh, in like share uh, upper higher vibration with all. So, uh, so there were a few other items, uh, a, a few other things since 1987 that have continually lifted the planet to a higher and higher vibration. And one of the things that it had to, for us to transition and uh, ascend, we had to reconnect our violet, our blue and our pink energy to become, have a violet flame so we could uh, once again connect, open our crown chakra and, and connect. So that's part of the deal of our healing. And so there were a number of events from 1987 until now that have happened to continually move that process along. One of them was, uh, we had to get together with the elemental kingdom and tell them we were gonna do something about spoiling the earth. And so in 1992, they were not about believing us until, but in 1992, there was the first earth summit and there were 176 countries and 40,000 individuals there who were committed to doing something to clean up and purify the earth. And so the uh, elemental kingdom said, okay, we hear you, we'll see, we'll, it's gonna take time. So that's kind of what they said. Another thing that happened that Patricia says is, is uh, global unifying and uh, uh, increasing in energy and height is the Olympic games. And she said in 1996, they were uh, held in Atlanta, Georgia, a very uh, spiritual spot for the Atlanteans. In 2000 in Australia, well, there's Ayers Rock. And uh, in 2021, Japan. And she said, these all of uh, humanity focusing and is very uplifting in light. There were also, uh, uh, she mentioned um, that we did in December 20, 122 of 2012, guess what? We actually did make the transition, the ascension to fifth dimension. Now, do we feel like it? You know, it looks like a pretty crazy world to us. And what she says is that it takes time to uh, purify and purge until we can actually know that we're in a higher vibration and actually embrace it. And that's gonna take time. Um, the other thing that she mentioned was uh, the, the uh, 2020 planetary pause, which cleaned up the earth somewhat by humans staying home and not polluting. And um, so I'm gonna read what she says is coming up for the future. She says, the frequency of light of the distorted, mutated, patriarchal fallen consciousness of our fragmented human egos has now been transmuted into light through the return of Mother God's divine love. We have a live violet flame hearts. That energy is being transmuted and sealed. Never again will those, the depth of pain and suffering that has been experienced since the fall from grace eons ago. Now the divine feminine and masculine are perfectly balanced in our heart flame. The miscreations of humanity occurred through a lack of awareness of what would occur when we close our heart. This experience is now recorded in the inner halls of learning and available through all realms of consciousness and will never again be repeated. What is happening today is an intensified process of cleansing and purging misqualified energy. When this purging and cleansing is complete, the door where evil dwells will be permanently transmuted into light. What is being created is a new octave of godhood that would prevent the children of God through all creation from ever falling to the depths of pain and suffering through separation and duality that the earth has experienced. And this, I, I had this a song come to my mind when I was planning this. And it, I, was, I grew up in the Methodist church and I think we ended our service. This is what came to me. It's called the Gloria Pat Pat Patri and it's as, in, as it is, 
as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Amen. And amen.